Hello. On this video, I want to show you like a voice flow custom extension that I built for a project that I'm working on uh, to have select inputs. But before we get into it, let me quickly introduce myself. So my name is Juan Carlos, but I go by mostly by JC. And I have like a voice flow agency uh, called Moonsight. So let's take a quick look how, how it works. So here uh, you can see the, the website and everything we do. And then um, I'm also happy to share that I recently joined the expert program. So you can find my profile here on the resource, hire a voice flow expert, and then you will get uh, into my profile here on voice flow. So that's uh, pretty much. I build voice flow agents for small businesses uh, looking to adapt and have some uh, automation going on on their website or like on social media. And if uh, you would like to have something like this for your business, uh, get in touch. But uh, let's get into it. So the demo that I have here, it's going to be like a few things uh, that uh, we are going to see, but let's get started. So we have uh, like the select input and let's say that we also have uh, dynamic data, but um, for the select, uh, there are certain type of data that we could have in certain format and we will see how, how it works. So if we select uh, here first Canada, we are going to see like the first um, version of the select. So you have like the, the actual select and two buttons, confirm and cancel. Um, here um, I'm using the uh, UI uh, branding of voice flow to put uh, like the same colors and then the same style. Uh, but uh, then let's see how it works. Uh, so you have like uh, different um, data inputs here. So let's go with uh, this one, we confirm. And then we will get like a feedback of uh, the country that we picked before and then the, the actual state. So let's uh, do the second uh, demo here, which is uh, Germany. And then um, this could be also in a way that uh, if we need to have like a multi-language uh, bot or agent, uh, I will show you like a few things that we could also have uh, for, for this on, on the same demo. But um, yeah, for this one, we see that, uh, yeah, the first message is in German, but the options are still, uh, the, the actual options are, are, are in German, but the UI is, um, let's say this one, uh yeah the, the ui that that we have right um so that would uh work but uh let's see how we can fix that so uh we confirm this one it goes um if you notice something here uh, two two different uh things here one is that we now have like the code of uh what we selected and we also instead of saying next demo uh, we have also in german so we are going to see how, how that works, but let's go to the next demo. Uh, we have a few to, to show you. So here we get into a, a little bit of customization and there are two things happening here. One is, uh, one is the, the customization of the UI, we change the color, so you can do that. And then uh, I have a pre-selected uh, input here, uh, but uh, yeah, maybe just to, to uh, as the user, um, yeah, select the state. This is what we have uh, already. Uh, so let's change it, and then we confirm. So we can see that uh, the change was uh, was made, and then the new state is there. Next, uh, let's uh, go to this demo. Uh, so we have a, a few things going on here. So first, uh, we change uh, the whole UI. That's uh, the first uh, change that you will see. Uh, in terms of the button uh, and also the colors. And the other change that you see, even the input inside the default input is also translated. So you can use uh, the function, uh, the, the custom extension here uh, with uh, like different languages and with different branding. So this uh, would be, let's uh, go with Lara and uh, we can confirm. So that is the, the demo. And then you also see that uh, we have like some Spanish uh, stuff here. And for the last demo, we could have, uh, let's say we have like dynamic data in a way, and I will show you in the template how, 
how it is happening here. But let's say we have like two countries. Um, this could be like depending on, on your data, depending on your flow, you could have this before or after. But let's say we pick again the US and then we get uh, back into the US uh, example, but it's not actually the same. And we are going to see how, how that works. And that would be it for, for the demo side of things. Uh, we have all of this and yeah, we can, we can say bye. So let's get into the actual project. Here we will have, uh, we will take a look. Uh, first, um, it's kind of a very simple setup, like a very simple uh, project, but you can see like uh, how, how it works. So first uh, we get buttons for each of the options and before going into the actual um, input and the actual flow, I'm having like a set um, variables here. Uh, two, like one for the country name and one for the country code. Because yeah, we can we can use that uh, later on and the same for, for each of the four countries. For the dynamic one, it will go to a special select dynamic data that we are going to see. And then uh, yeah, the rest is, is pretty much uh, self-explanatory. So let's first take a look at Canada. If you go back and see here like when we picked canada uh we got uh, only like the the input that what we choose like the option that we choose with no uh code and that's why we because like the custom extension supports uh first um normal array of inputs so here i have this on the components side of things that are, are here behind it but um uh, let's take a look how the data looks like for this one. You could have like an array of entries uh, that you have, and then you pretty much uh, stringify and then uh, have the data uh, here, and then I'm choosing like this variable. And this is the actual template that uh, like the, the custom extension. So for the body, I'm just passing like the, yeah, like the variable. Uh, as it is, and then it will go to the custom extension and then it will be processed. And then I am, I am putting like three paths, complete, cancel and error, depending on what you, what you choose uh, there. And after that, um, it's just uh, displaying the, the, the output, but uh, first we get uh, from the response that comes uh, back from the widget, uh, the, the event, we get the last event payload value because that's where I am putting the, the actual value on the on the extension. And then we grab it onto this voice flow variable, customs, uh, customer state name. And then we can just uh, output the, the information here, country and state that we got earlier. So that is uh, one example. The other example that you saw for Germany is that we got the code. So the other the other thing that we can we can take a look here uh and this would be germany is uh we for the data uh what i put is uh, also that like it supports um like an array of objects with uh, two uh, actually three but here is like two uh, keys or two values so text for the actual label of the input and value for the actual value uh, of the input and then you pass the same data and then on the widget, it will handle that um, yeah, automatically. So you don't have to do anything else here. The same thing, it's uh, select data and then it will go there and then the widget will, will handle it. The, the extension will handle it on its own. And the other thing that uh, you could uh, take a look here is the JavaScript code because here is a little bit different. Uh, if we want to get like the the state name because we only get like the value and yeah as the state code and then what i'm doing is like parsing what we sent before as as a stringified uh, of the select data and then with that i'm basically finding what is the the, the actual state that it was uh, selected and uh, with that we can get the text and that is saved to the customer state name and then we can uh, display the three, the three values, the name, the state name, and the state code. And that's how, how it works. Uh, the messages here, for example, are yeah, in German, but uh, 
regarding the translation part. I will take a look uh, later on. The other option that we, we saw was for the select uh, United States. So if you remember, then uh, here you are not going to see it, but we change first, like we had first, like a selected uh, value here and a different uh, color for the button. And that is very easy to do uh, because now you could also uh, support uh, like passing like the selected as true. And for that value, uh, it will be as already selected on the extension itself. And for the color names, uh, but for the, for the customization, you could pass uh, an extra object here, UI, uh, with some values. Uh, for this one, I'm as passing like button color and button over, over. And with that, we can change uh, the uh, yeah the UI a little bit. Uh, for the next uh, country was uh, Venezuela. So for this one. Uh, yeah, it was also same, similar as Canada, passing just like the, the array of values. But uh, here you can see like all the possible uh, things that you can change in terms of the UI. Uh, so you can adapt uh, your, yeah, your voice flow uh, project and the select input depending on what you, you want to do. So you, you have the labels, but you also have like the default uh, option text and the the colors both like the text but uh the, the, the background as well so you can you can change that and pretty much uh, it goes the same thing as the other ones and for the dynamic one which is also quite interesting like depending on the data that you have or like the use case you could have like the data as in these formats like uh yeah you could uh, embed this on your voice wall but uh, it could happen that sometimes you have like this on, on runtime, you have to fetch this from, from the API. So for that, um, you could do a little bit of coding. It's not that uh, that hard either, but let's say you have like a, yeah, like a countries, and then the last utterance would be like the code of the, of the selection here, the country. And with that, you can get uh, from the countries, uh, select the key that is uh, same as this, and that will, uh, pick up the country name and depending also on the country code like you have like the data here let's say this uh, was coming from from an api um or you could have everything handled on on the same javascript step so you don't have to repeat uh, things uh, but here you could do like a small uh yeah if a statement or like expression where you can check, okay, if the country is uh, CA, meaning Canada, you return the state uh, CA, otherwise you return the states uh, for the US. And that will go uh, as, as usual uh, for the extension. You don't have to do anything else because yeah, it's, it's the same thing. And that's um, yeah, how you can also have this type of dynamic data on runtime, uh, depending on the data that you have as long as you comply or follow this format, either array of strings or an array of objects uh, with these uh, keys, it has to be like text value and selected if you if you want to use the extension, uh, but then you can customize the extension and then update uh, your data. That's also up to you. And for the last part of the video, I want to show you, um, well, actually, let's first uh, take a look at the code real quick. You can have this uh, from the uh, link in the description. I will put this, uh, yeah, this template, the template and also like the code. So you could have uh, everything to run this. Here, very simple, uh, update your project ID. And for the extension, um, yes, uh, here is the is the actual code. You can take it, tweak it, uh, customize it, improve it, and then yeah, uh, use it as, as as you wish. But then you have like few different functions here to have all the all the um, yeah functionality here, like creating all the elements and so on. So you could uh, do this and have this uh, on your own. I hosted on somewhere and then you could you could uh, have this support for your boss will like having selects uh, on your project that's uh, for this one and for the 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 last one uh, one thing that i wanted to show you is like um, you could have like many messages here uh, depending on the for example here uh, in canada we have 
uh, English for, for the language. But here in Venezuela, like we have uh, Spanish. That is uh, one approach of doing multilingual, uh, multi-language uh, agents. But you could also use the latest messages feature that VoiceFlow release, and that uh, can be seen in two ways. One uh, would be like if we click on the next demo, you will see that we have uh, three entries. And the way that you can use this is like uh, you put an if, and then you put a variable, and then the code that you want to run. Uh, or like the conditions that you want to run for this. And if it matches, uh, it will pick this one. Then if it doesn't match, it, it will go to the next one. And you can use both like the condition builder, but also code. So a little bit of code, and then you, it, it goes there. And if any, any of that uh, matches, then it will go to the default one. So that is one way you could uh, manage uh, like different type of messages in this case for for multi-language uh, feature but uh, there is also the possibility to have like the same uh, text or like the same uh, thing uh, for different in, in different places that's also very helpful uh, for example for this one you see like it, it, this is used in four instances and the cool part here is like if you go to messages uh, you are going to see uh, where they are used. So in our case, it was like an error happened. And then you can see that all the places that it was uh, added as well. And I also split uh, like some of the messages depending on the language here. And for the last, very last part that I wanted to, to share here is that on this template, I also put uh, these inputs as uh, in the library. So you could have uh, like drag and drop. Uh, here and then it will be picked up like the default version of the dynamic data. So you can you can add this as well. So that is for uh, all for this video. I hope you like it. I hope it was uh, helpful and I uh, will see you on the next one. Bye bye.